Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and I'm really excited today to be unboxing Cerebria, the Inside World. This is the origin box you're seeing here. This game was designed by Victor Peter and Richard Aman and this is published by Mind Clash Games. Without further ado, let's go ahead and flip the box over, find out a little bit more of what Cerebria has for us and then we're gonna dive inside the box. Submerge into your inside world and shape the future of Cerebria in this objective driven area control team game. Now in this game you play as a spirit, a powerful entity representing either bliss or gloom, the two opposing forces of the inside world. By invoking and interacting with emotion cards on the board, your goal is to spread your influence over various areas of Cerebria. When in doubt, let your aspiration cards and intentions guide you. By interacting with the origin, Cerebria's rotating centerpiece, you may trigger scoring events known as revelations. If your team successfully completes the goal set by the current aspiration cards, you may contribute a fragment to Cerebra's growing identity built in the middle of the board. Each fragment in the identity will be worth points at the end of the game, but you may also score points between revelations by fulfilling your team's intentions. The game ends when Cerebria's identity is complete and the team that contributed the most to shaping it wins. Now, as you can see right over here on the far left-hand side, it says right here, play solo or co-op with the exclusive Ego module. So they've built in a solo mode into this particular origin box and it is available inside of this particular copy which I'm really excited about. For those of you that have had a chance to play this solo or co-op let me know in the comments below what your thoughts of it were. Mind Clash has obviously put out some incredible productions prior. We're all familiar with Anachrony which is a extremely popular solo game which I actually did an unboxing for on the channel just a few months ago and now we are looking at Cerebra and I cannot wait to find out more about this one. It certainly is colorful. It looks like it's going to have a serious table presence. On the back here it says game features, multiple layers of area control with different benefits, dynamic objective based scoring where timing is essential, constant player interaction with a team play aspect. Of course that will not come into play when you're playing solo. Multiple ways to victory with an exciting mix of tactics and strategy. Customizable gameplay with optimal game modes for experienced players. Forces of Balance variant with a whole different gameplay, scaling the number up to five or six players. And then the one that I really, really am excited about right there as one of the major game features, solo co-op variant with variable difficulty level. So once you get used to the regular difficulty, you can start bumping things up. Now at the very bottom of this, you can see a lot of colorful stuff going on here that may not make much sense, but we'll see this up close very soon. Down here it says play as one of the eight different spirits with their specific powers and emotion decks, which are all right here. We've got enjoy playing with balance, a unique side of spirits coming alive as breathtaking miniatures. So the spirits in this particular box, being that this is the origin box, are going to actually be painted, which means they're going to look phenomenal. Uh, compared to just the non-painted version. Uh, the fact that I don't have to paint something is a huge plus for me because, well, I just don't have the time with all my efforts going into the channel. So that is a huge plus for me. And on the far right hand side, it says explore 64 different emotional creatures and customize your deck from 200 cards. So now that we know a little bit more about what we can expect inside the box, let's actually go ahead and open this thing up. So when you first open up Cerebria, at least in this origin box, you're going to be greeted with the Big Book of Bliss. And again, I'm going to be very unfamiliar with a lot of what I'm going to look at here, but I know full well that these are the two major areas of influence would be my assumption based on the back of the box, which is Bliss and Gloom. So these are going to likely kind of detail that out. So let's take a look at each of these little booklets here. So you can see this one here, ah, it mentions which spirits are involved. So we have love, empathy, delight, heart. Harmony. And if we go ahead to the next page, 
Okay, so we actually have some talk here about the cards. So this is going to help you understand the spirits of bliss, essentially. And this document is going to run about, looks like, uh, the number of pages are not mentioned on it, actually. But in terms of an odd guess, I'd say about 10 to 12 pages on each of them, right? And that's going to basically sum up the cards that are involved as well. Now, on the gloom side of things... You're talking about hatred, malice, misery, and anxiety, all of which are in here. Now, the more I see these spirits, the more excited I get to see the painted versions of them. They look fantastic as artwork within these books. I cannot wait to see what they actually look like once we get down to that level. Next up will be the rule book is what you're going to be running into next. And this is actually quite a sizable rule book, to be honest. So you're going to be in for a read with this one. The artwork, again, on this is fantastic super colorful and nice. I'll probably be saying that quite a bit throughout. Um, and even the rule book itself is really beautiful. Uh, again, you're going to want to go through all of this to understand all the different components. So you have a good appreciation and understanding for what they're all called, because as you go through the rule book, it will help you understand what it's all referencing. But you can see here, you've got the gloom components on one side, the bliss components on the other. This particular rule book, we will not go through every page on, but I want to give you a rough idea as to the world of Cerebria, the game overview section, the origin which is going on in the middle of the board that's rotating in the center of the game board. Again, I may not be able to actually have that set up during this unboxing, but that is the, the idea. There's also this tower thing going on here in the center, which is pretty cool looking. And you got the setup. So the setup for this particular game here looks like I mean, it states that it's about seven steps to set it up, and then it's actually talking about what's going on here. There's a lot to look at, so it is going to take some time to actually read this and become familiar with it, but I have a funny feeling the reward is well worth it. So... This is a rough idea as to how the rulebook is laid out. Lots of illustrations, colorful, easy to read, even though there's much information to read. Uh, there's enough illustrations that the pages are broken up nicely. There's about half wording here and half pictures to go along with it, which will help you to consume it at a quicker pace. And then things are broken up nicely. If you're talking about emotions, aspirations, order of play, it's all kind of broken up nice. If I skip to the end of the book, and what I'll do is I'll show you guys a number of the pages as I went along here as to what you can expect inside. That's roughly the layout on the pages. But if you head to the very, very back, once you get to the end, you're going to start getting into... There's a handful of pages, of course, that are going to relate back to some of the different iconography on the actual spirit boards themselves. So you can see right here the spirit boards. This is for love. This is for delight and empathy. They're all listed out here as a good reference. And then... At the very, very back of this rule book, what I love to see always is a great glossary or reference guide. In this case, we got the emotion powers up top and the icons. And I guarantee you this will be useful the first few times you're playing this. So that is something to have next to you for sure, even after you've consumed that rule book. Next up, we've got the Ego Solo or Co-op Game Mode. And look at that. It's its own actual booklet. This is not just a page or two thrown into the back of a rule book. It's its own actual rule book that's fantastic to see i love it giving uh the you know focus in the solo realm and not just tagging it into the rule book at the very back is fantastic so this is going to show you the component list that's basically going to be the new components that are needed to play solo or co-op so you have defiance endeavor and judgment your introduction overview first play recommendations probably to help out beginners main board setup of course they'll likely be talking specifically to differences um, in the setup but if if this is actually looking the way that I think it's looking, it looks like it might actually be the setup for Solo removed from anything to do with the major rulebook that we already looked through. So this could literally be just the setup instructions from start to finish for only Solo. If that's the case, that is fantastic. Uh, so you only have to reference this document to play, which is making me extremely happy out of the gates because I don't even have to look at the other book. Um, your order of play here, your ego turn overview. So all this stuff is covered here. I wouldn't be surprised if a certain portion of this, you might have to go back to that original rule book to reference, but it looks like they've done a good job here uh, putting the important rules inside of one location. They've got the actions labeled out here, basic. The pri They actually have examples of how this all works, illustrations in here as well. And in terms of pages, you're looking at about 12 pages. 
and that's including the back page. So I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing. I'm really, really happy to see this booklet on its own. The very back page shows your action priorities, your special operations, and then again, it has iconography here to help you out too. So again, very, very cool. Very, very happy with that. Now this, this one I'm not familiar with. This might be a Kickstarter thing, the forces of balance. I'm not sure. This is another rule book, but I, I this might be the one that uh, pushes the player count from to five and six, if I remember the back of the box correctly. So we won't go through this one too, too much because my focus really isn't on it. But I'll give you an idea that this is about a, pretty close to the solo one in terms of size. It's about 10 pages, 10 to 11 pages or so. And again, follows the same thing. Like, how are you going to play this game with that many people? That's going to be the gist of this one here. Now, here is a look at the game board for Cerebria. And I can tell you right now, this is probably one of the most vibrant and beautiful boards I have ever seen in a board game. This thing has so much color that I hope this actually shows up on camera as bright and as vivid as I'm actually seeing it. Now, one thing that I've noticed the second I laid this thing down, and again, remember this is the origin box, so you're going to have to double check on the Kickstarter whether certain things about the game board and certain pieces that are included in this box may or may not be in the retail version of this particular uh, board game. But I can tell you this board is beautiful, uh, even if it was just printed as this only. But on top of this, there's also UV printing on the actual game board itself. So I don't know if it's going to be easy to show you that. Uh, what I'll try to do is maybe bring up one of these edges. And as you can see right there, you can see the light hitting that ridge. Basically, all the circles going around this entire thing have UV um, you know, embossed on those edges. And they're on the actual player card areas as well, all the way through. And all these lines are the exact same as well. So when the light is hitting this thing, it looks like it's just like all energized. It looks incredible. And of course, the only way that I could actually show you that full on would be to be rotating this board in a way that would just probably not be that useful for you to actually see in the end. But I just want to let you know that there is UV printing on this game board. And as you can see, it's quite beautiful. So what I'm going to do so you guys can appreciate a little bit more is I'm going to zoom in on certain portions of the board so you can actually see some of the end game scoring tracks up here, as well as some of the cradle of senses over here. We'll just take a look at different pieces of this board as we go around. So this is a look at the top right hand corner of the board where the Cradle of Senses is, as well as some end game scoring and this crazy looking track, as well as some space for some cards. In the very center, we have the Valley of Motives, which is another section of the board that seems to be extremely important. In the top left-hand corner, another space for some cards. We also have the Willow of Values, another tracker, endgame scoring, and you can see the artwork on the actual board is beautiful. Each of those major sections of the Cerebria here is extremely colorful, has some unique artwork behind it and some shading of a particular color. So the Willow of Values has the green shade, the value of motives has a purple shade. The Cradle of Senses has an orange shade. And the last two are the Land of Desires and the Network of Thoughts with their two color shades. If you go ahead and you flip that game board over that we just took a look at, you will see an equally beautiful side on the other side of the game board. It looks just like this and it focuses majorly on the artwork. Now we'll head right back into the box where we find some more Ziploc type bags that we can go ahead and use for tokens once we get down to those punch boards, which my guess is are underneath these spirits here. We've got the spirits for gloom as well as the spirits for bliss. We'll go through these one at a time. So the very first one, you can see they are quite beautiful. This one is Malice. It's again, it's going to have a whole bunch of information specific to this particular character on it. Not going to speak to that, but I will show you the other side as well. So the two different sides, this side is side B and this side here is side A. And then we're gonna move over here to hatred. Remember that I cannot wait to get to those painted minis because whatever you're seeing here on the left hand side is what these minis are gonna look like. Seriously cannot wait to see how vibrant and colorful they are. Then we've got misery coming up next on the A side and then on the B side. And lastly, for the gloom side of things, we have anxiety. And the opposite side for anxiety. Now we'll start up the bliss side of the equation here with love. Very colorful, very nice art on that one. This is side A 
and this is side B. We have empathy here. And on the opposite side, side B, we have delight. Looks quite delightful. And then side B. Now again, in terms of differences between A and B, I'm not looking to pick those out. There might actually be differences. There has to be, being that they're A and B sides. It could also have to do with something to do with the solo side of things as well. Who knows? Maybe you're playing one side or the other based on how you're playing the game. This one is harmony. And this is the opposite side to harmony. And we've got reason. And the opposite side for reason. And lastly, we have intuition. And the opposite side for intuition. And then we move to the punch board, which we knew we were going to hit at some point, knowing that we had those uh, baggies included inside the box. So this is going to be the first punch out token sheet. And there's actually a, a couple of them underneath this. So we'll go through each one of these. They're going to be very colorful, as you can see. And there's also the depictions of these different creatures or spirits in uh, token form as well, I believe. Unless, of course, these are additions to other characters or things you may see in the game. But very, very colorful, very bright and beautiful all the way around for this particular sheet. Next up, we have Gloom here. So this one here is a little darker set than the other one was. And again, has some of the Gloom spirits on it, as well as a whole bunch of tokens for all of them. Lots going on in this. We've got Bliss here. So we'll take Bliss out. Again, a whole bunch of tokens and things like that to look at for Bliss. And we'll flip it over to the other side. That's what it looks like. Certainly gonna pop really nicely on the uh, game board. Now this is cool to see. Inside the box itself, there's already pre-designated trays for storage. That is awesome. So once all this stuff starts getting punched out and placed in different compartments, it's gonna be neatly organized. And this is one of the major centerpieces in the center of the board. And this one, I don't remember the name of off the top of my head, but this thing right here is gonna be sitting straight in the center and rotating as the game goes on. It's an integral part of things. We've also got, oh, look at these towers. These are insane. So I don't remember which ones are which uh, off the top of my head, although Gloom, Bliss, and I forget what the other one is now. Um, but they have a top here, a top piece, and they break down almost like Lego, essentially. They build on top of each other. So you can see here for this particular tower, it goes up like that. It looks like there's symbols on the bottom layers, multiple different symbols on the uh, bottom section or the bottom three pieces. And this goes up about three sections high over here, three sections high over here. They stack on top. And then the seventh piece is the very top of the tower. And there's three of those towers with a nice spot for all of them inside the box, which is super handy. So my guess is that the miniatures are hiding underneath these trees. We'll get to them shortly. We're gonna go through these cards first. And I'm just gonna show you the artwork on them and the iconography and things like that. Again, I'm not gonna be explaining this because I haven't actually played this game before, but you can get a feel and an idea as to what the cards are like. And they're big tarot sized cards, which is awesome. Uh, that's really, really handy if you need to sleeve these things. They're quite large. They look like that size. Uh, but again, you can check Board Game Geek to get the exact sizing on these if you if you choose to sleeve them. But they are quite beautiful. They definitely should pop up and the coloring on them and the representations of the different entities or spirits are extremely cool looking. So I'm just going to go through this pile here. So many different icons to reference, but remember there's a really handy reference at the back of the rule book, which will help you to decipher a lot of the stuff on these cards. And then of course it becomes second nature the more you play. I am a fan of the artwork. I've said that multiple times through this unboxing so far. It really is very uniform project. There's, there's not many pieces of this I'm pulling out and going, well, that doesn't seem or is a little out of sync than the rest. Everything gels together really nicely. I think when this is on the table in full form, it is going to be an eye catcher for sure. Uh, so this is going to conclude the very first deck of cards that I have here. And this is actually quite a bit. If I show you the side of this deck, this was not a small deck of cards by any means. 
Underneath the deck of cards we just looked at was a smaller deck of cards with some reference cards inside of them. So that's kind of cool. So I'll just kind of flip through these. And once we get to the reference card, I will show you the sides of that. This is actually really interesting because it gives you the actual flow of play as well as the steps of a revelation all mapped out there. And if we flip this thing over to the opposite side, you actually get yourself a nice breakdown of the different realm actions that go on. And I believe there's four of these inside of this uh, set of cards right here. So you'll see in a few seconds, we're gonna uh, bump up against another one of these in a different color, but the same thing. Now, what I could be wrong about is maybe these are different per reference card. If these are actually handled differently or play differently, but they look like they should be the same, except just a different coloring there for each player represented would be my guess. So that is a much smaller deck of cards. And then underneath of this particular deck, there appears to be some really high quality components. This first component that I pulled out is an extremely nice one. Looks to be a first player marker, although I could be wrong, but you can see here it's engraved, it's etched, it's embossed, it has a nice gloss to it. It's a beautiful coin. If this is a first player marker, it is certainly a nice one. Now, one thing to mention again with any of these games that are Kickstarters is you definitely want to check the Kickstarter page to ensure this isn't something that's exclusive only to the origin box. It might be in the retail box, but those are the types of things you'll want to double check if you're interested in going off this unboxing but this is an absolutely beautiful token here and it essentially is a coin it has a nice weight to it it's very shiny and the uh the the ingrained uh image that's actually on this coin is super high quality the next component that's coming from that compartment inside the tray are these beautiful translucent or transparent uh, blue counters. I'm not sure exactly what they're for just yet but there's a handful of them as you can see right here inside the box. Next up is a ton of these beautiful crystallized gems, essentially. They're purple in color. There's actually more of these, and they're more of a lavender than purple. They look purple on screen, but in front of me, at least, they're more so lavender. But this is about two thirds of what's included inside the bag that I got inside this box. These things are absolutely beautiful. Very similar to the blue ones that we just took a look at just a little bit ago, these are red versions of exactly those same types of translucent or transparent tokens. These are very high quality and I really like the look and feel of them. Also in the box, you're gonna find these standees. There are blue, orange, and pink inside of this origin box. And just when you thought we were done with all the cards, no, there is tons more of them in this box. I'm gonna go through all of these as quick as I can so you can kind of see all the different uh, pictures there for the different interesting little creatures involved in this game. Very, very cool. And it looks like we even have some uh, judgment cards buried in there, maybe references for that. We have Doubt, Endeavor, so many things to learn and check out. Another flow of play card here. Now remember, this does have the ability, I believe, to go up to six players if I mentioned that earlier on. So there's gonna be a bunch of different reference cards beyond the ones we already saw. So many cards in this one. So many unique, unique pieces of art too. <laughs> the cards are awesome. Loving the little creatures. They're very, very interesting. Judgment, Doubt, Dever. Like I thought this would have maybe a deck of cards, maybe two, but this is quite a bit. Uh, there's quite a bit more. And there's even another deck after this one too. So they, uh, they certainly went all out with the cards in this one. Of course, they're supporting up to six players. So if that is correct, and I'm not uh, stumbling on the number of players that can play this, uh, I guess you need to have the cards in here to support that at the bare minimum. But that is a good, this is a good sized pile, very similar to the first set of cards that we went through. Here's a look at the very last deck of cards that come in this, at least from this particular size anyway. There's still a mini pack of cards in there as well, but I thought I would show you this one all the way through so you can kind of see the different weird and wonderful creations that are inside of this deck. There certainly are a number of them. They're very unique looking. <laughs> they get weirder as you go along. Oh man, so many different things there. Got a lot to learn in this one. And again, this is being a Mind Clash game and Anachrony being something from the past from these guys. Plus that Kickstarter that landed and more content coming for Anachrony. Like it's, it, they've definitely got the solo player in mind when they create these types of games. They do a good job of implementing that. They killed it with Anachrony. So I'm really interested to see how this all plays out with Cerebria 
and uh, whether or not it's as solid as something like Anachrony is. So that is the last major deck of cards, but we still have these mini cards down here in the bottom right. So these mini cards look like this on the back. There's actually different types mixed in here. So I won't be able to really speak to them, except that they probably relate back to the different types of spirits and their colors. We'll flip this over to the opposite side here and we'll see liveliness have more essence on the main board. So these could be major goals would be my guess in this whole game that maybe you pull from the beginning of a round or beginning of the game and have to try to uh, go after throughout the course of the game. Who knows, but uh, there's a number of them in here. And you can see the shading on each of the different colors are kind of in a pastel to match the color on the back, like orange. And it kind of has like a tint of orange on that one side. So very, very cool looking all the way through. There's a whole bunch of these, not as big as the other deck of cards we went through, but still sizable. So now that we're done the first major sections of these tray, and you can see that this one's a removable tray. We're gonna move this out of the way. You guys are gonna see some absolutely beautiful miniatures painted here inside this box. They look fantastic. Even behind this clear coat case or plastic covering, we are gonna pull these out of the box and get a super nice close up view on each of these. And here is a nice up close view of all of the miniatures that come inside of Cerebria and they are painted and look phenomenal. I'm gonna take each one of these out by hand and put them in front of the camera so you guys can see exactly how well the painting is done on each of them. Here is the first one. Look at the detail all the way around on it. It's really well done for a pre-painted miniature inside of the box. Flip it over to the opposite side, it looks like this. Colors are really, really good. It's got an orange base, and I'm really, really happy with the quality of this. Here's an up close view of the second miniature in the box. Has a lot more really small detail that's been kind of focused on in this one, especially in the face area on the body with some of the emblems. And you'll see the shading's really well done as well. If you flip it over to the back side, it's it's pretty good. I'm really impressed. I shouldn't even say it's pretty good. It's really good for a pre-painted miniature in a board game. Quite, quite happy. Here is the next miniature in the box. Looks pretty cool. Very, very joyful individual. Looks quite happy with himself. Definitely not part of the gloom lineup, that's for sure. Like this one, very unique sculpt and the painting on it is really good. Here's the next one in line. We'll just spin it around so you can see it from all angles. Lots of nice detail kind of punched out on the back of it as well down here with the different colors. That's really nice to see. So again, I mean, it was it's a little bit beyond just uh, throwing a shade of color on a particular area of the miniature. There's a little extra in there just to kind of make things pop. This one's quite creepy, kind of looks like a grasshopper almost. A very, very long and skinny, but you can see has some nice, uh, you know, the metallic there on the edges of the, what looks to be kind of like armor almost on the edges is pretty cool. And uh, there's some different colors going on there mixed together. For instance, you got the green and the purple kind of merging together on his back. It looks really good. Very interesting looking creature. The next one is also quite thin and skinny, but you can see here the detail is not lost on even these really, really, really tiny arms that this thing has. There's still a lot there going on. And there's a lot of uh, glossiness, kind of like a wet look almost and sparkles kind of going on there too in the paint. There's, uh, yeah, just, it looks really good. I'm really, really happy with these. Um, and so the bases on these ones have changed over. This is likely to be a part of the gloom side of things. I believe that the first four above the tray here were all part of Bliss. And there's two on the right that I'm not sure of as they're kind of a, a lavender purple base and the blues on the bottom for what I would assume would be gloom. So we're going through the start of the gloom lineup for miniatures, I believe right now. Here is the next one in order. Again, really nice details on the face and the feathers, flames, all that stuff. Whatever's mixed in there looks really, really good. And then down below, look at this, look at this thing. I don't even know, just the tentacles everywhere. Like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. It doesn't look like a happy, happy thing, uh, but it sure looks beautiful nonetheless. It's very, very nice and creepy all at the same time. Here is the next one, quite an interesting uh, layout for this guy. Very thin through the middle, but gigantic wings. Hollow underneath uh, through the legs area here, if those are even legs, I don't even know. It's more of an entity than anything else. Really nice, uh, oh, it looks great. 
Looks great. And you've even got, I don't know what's going on with this. It's just kind of like this nice, wet, glossy look. It could have been the, the wash that it was applied to the miniature still sticking there, but it does appear to actually have some type of sparkle, kind of glaze or something like that in there that's making it shine and shimmer just a little bit more. Kind of gives it a nice, cool effect. Now check this guy out. This is like a translucent, transparent, very cool looking golemish type character. Uh, I really like this one. This one just sticks out to me a lot. I love the fact that you can see straight through parts of its body. Coloring looks fantastic all the way around. This is a really cool one. This could be hatred. I don't know which of the, uh, the gloom spirits this one represents, but that would kind of make sense. Something along those lines. And finally, we come to the last miniature, and this one again is, uh, this one's sort of skinny as well, uh, but is very, very intricate in its design, has a lot of colors going on and mixed and blend together. This one's quite cool, the hair kind of weaving throughout. Very, very nice. And that's gonna wrap up the unboxing for Cerebria. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this is informative in showing you what you can expect to find inside the box, at least the origin box. This one is Kickstarter exclusive, remember that. So you'll wanna check out the differences between this one as well as the retail one if you're looking to pick it up retail. But besides that, I really hope this gives you an in-depth look at what you can expect component-wise inside the box. Thank you guys, and as always, keep on rolling solo.